How long does it take for you to go to school every day? Around one hour and a half. Almost two hours. Pa. Mm, three hours. Pa. Uh, normally, without traffic, it should be around 40 minutes. However, most likely day to day, it's going to be an hour and 30 minutes. Thank you so much. These experiences aren't isolated only for the students in UP Diliman, but it is a universal struggle for the Filipinos who commute almost every day. Imagine how tormenting these experiences are. With these answers, it made me curious. What are the root causes of this horror for so many Filipinos? Well, let's analyze it. According to data published by Christy Balita in 2024, the total number of commuter train passengers in the Philippines in 2021 is 103 million. Taking into account the consensus made by the Philippine Statistics Authority for the year 2020, there's about 13,484,462 people residing in NCR, which means that our rail transportation does not only serve those from NCR but also those who came from nearby provinces like Rizal, Cavite, and Bulacan. Even with the statistics that are readily available, we only have a limited number of train lines in the urban area, such as LRT-1 which covers Paranaque to Quezon City, LRT-2 which covers Antipolo to Recto, MRT-3 which covers the whole Edsa Boulevard, and other railways that are being constructed and planned, such as LRT-1 extension to Cavite and Metro Manila Subway in Pasig. This transportation crisis brings a long list of problems for the country. It costs us billions of pesos per day in loss efficiency, intensifies air pollution due to increased vehicle emissions, and makes commuting an experience that is inaccessible, inefficient, or even dangerous. Did you know that there's about 5,899 commuting accidents on record for the year 2019? That's about 16 accidents per day on average. However, there are actually some recent advancements in our country in regards to the rail transportation as the Phase 1 of the LRT-1 Cavite extension was just recently opened this November which is expected to increase the number of passengers daily up to 80,000 people. The 2022-kilometer MRT-7 that consists of 14 stations is said to begin its partial operation by the 4th quarter of 2025, which is expected to carry up to 300,000 passengers in its first year of operation daily. Metro Manila Subway is also under construction and is set to be completed by July of 2027. But it leads us to the question, are the current advancements enough to already solve the problem? The answer is not yet. There are so many possibilities that can be achieved to ensure that every commuter will have an efficient commute experience, just like the rail transportation system in first world countries like Japan, Singapore, and South Korea. But here's the thing, building railways isn't just about tracks and trains, it's about building a life that runs smoother. Sure, it costs a lot upfront, but planning it right saves time, money, and a whole lot of stress down the line, literally. Every detail matters. Designing the rail network, designing the stations and routes, choosing the right trains, and yes, even developing schedules that balance travel time and operator efficiency. Because when the train's late, everyone knows about it. Well, the demand is clear, and while expanding and upgrading our railways is essential, it comes with a hefty price tag. Case in point, the Metro Manila subway, currently under construction, has an estimated cost of 488.5 billion pesos. A tremendous amount, you say. Well, this is where the mathematical models step in to save the day. It's really about optimizing every element from determining the shortest and most efficient routes to ensuring the trains can carry the right number of passengers, all while staying within budget. And let's talk about the real flex, a robust system. Railways don't just need to be efficient, they need to be resilient. A well-designed railway system must be able to adapt to disruptions such as closed lines with minimal impact on time and resources. Maybe it's a schedule tweak, maybe a station gets skipped, maybe it's a rerouting, but the train and its commuters should keep moving. Of course, it goes without saying that the benefits of a good railway system extend beyond convenience. 
in Metro Manila, where air pollution remains a critical issue, shifting more commuters to trains could lead to cleaner air and healthier communities. Did you know that every kilometer traveled by a fully operational subway emits 80% less carbon dioxide compared to cars? The payoff? A system that doesn't just move people, but also moves the needle for urban progress. Efficient public transport reduces congestion, better access to jobs and opportunities, boosts the economy, and even gives Mother Earth a breather. Think of how the LRT-1 Cavita extension, just like any other railway system, will bring thousands closer to key hubs, reduce travel time, and unlock growth for surrounding provinces. It's a win-win-win situation.